Hello and welcome to another episode of Stream It or Leave It. Today I'm going to be talking about Kevin Can Go F himself, a kind of dramedy, dark comedy starring Annie Murphy and I absolutely adored her on Schitt's Creek so I was in for this one. The show opens with a scene that looks like something out of a sitcom. I was surprised by the canned laughter and immediately disappointed but we'll come back to that in a bit because it's not all it seems. Alison's husband has a kind of lad situation in the house with his father and another guy who's always coming over, a neighbour I guess, and and they're joking about beers and tomfoolery. And it reminded me a lot of shows like King of Queens. The guy is always in a sports jersey and the wife is always doing something around the house that's domestic in nature. So right on cue, Alison comes in with her laundry basket while they're all discussing a rager party for their 10th anniversary. And Alison tries to suggest maybe having a dinner, but her husband talks her into having this rager party. And in this scene, we see the usual gender stereotype, some mild misogyny and just a lot of obnoxiousness from from the male characters who put her down for laughs, which is the point. Alison puts a smile on her face and she plays the comedy long suffering wife who's exasperated, but she never quite gets mad. We do see her in a private moment, however, and she's struggling and unhappy. This is when we notice that she seems to exist in two very different worlds. Her bright, happy, colourful sitcom life with the laughing track and then her sepia tone world where her husband is noticeably absent. We see her in this world when her husband isn't in the scene or when she's outside of the house. We also get a moment in the liquor store where she works with her aunt and her aunt is telling her how lucky she is for her marriage and her life and Alison just stares into the distance, clearly unable to put on a happy face. One of her dreams throughout the episode is to move out of their house, which is in bad shape. She'd like to move out into a better neighborhood and start over. She announces to her husband that this is happening and she's looking over the numbers. He doesn't want this initially because he's fine with things staying as they are, but he eventually agrees. At one point in the episode, she goes into a diner in town and it turns out that it's owned by Sam, someone she used to know. I'm guessing they dated, but they don't say this in the pilot. You can see though that they have great chemistry. Anyway, it's been 15 years and he's returned back to what Alison considers to be a dead end town. And even though she isn't making any moves on him, when he mentions his partner, his wife or his girlfriend, and what they're up to, things get awkward and Alison rushes out. So Alison gets home to the anniversary party, having put in a lot of effort into this charcuterie board that nobody seems very interested in, but that her husband insisted on. It seems as though she's almost going to have an honest conversation with her husband's boss, but but when she comes back into the room, he's having fun in comedy sitcom land with her husband. And this husband also announces to the group that they're no longer moving, something he hadn't discussed with her. Her nerves are really frayed at this point. So when her neighbor tells her that her husband secretly cleared out their savings, that he came to the neighbors for help because of it, Alison kind of snaps. Or she comes to the realization of how mentally tired she is and how badly she wants to get away and start over. At the end of the episode, after her night partying with the local mechanic, she goes back home to her sitcom life. But it appears in a way, I think, that her dark sepia character is starting to blend into her sitcom self. She fantasizes about stabbing her husband in the sepia world. And when she comes to, turns out she actually broke the glass in the sitcom world. Generally, the two Alisons are are pretty separate but this feels like a significant change. She also looks pretty satisfied at the thought of her having done it in the fantasy world. As for my thoughts I absolutely hate the sitcom bits. I hate shows with laughing tracks and I hate the King of Queens style of comedy. Those bits were so unbearable for me I almost found it triggering. I don't know why. I hated it but I'm so intrigued by this premise and I really enjoy the sepia moments that I feel like I'm already starting to get invested and I really want to see how she's going to go about finding herself and getting out of this marriage. I already knew that Annie Murphy was really talented, but she's really, really good on this show. And will I keep watching? Yes, I will. As of recording this video, I've already seen episode two. And while I maintain that I absolutely hate the sitcom scenes, it's compelling enough for me to continue. And that's it for this video. If you've seen it, feel free to share your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.